presents Hollywood. Sleeper Brothers Company, the makers of Lux Toilet Soap, brings you the Lux Radio Theater, starring Edmund Gwen in Miracle on 34th Street. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. Irving Cummings. Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. Our Christmas present to you is one of our 20 greats, which has become a modern Christmas classic, Miracle on 34th Street. So if you have any doubts as to whether or not there's a Santa Claus, I want you to meet Edmund Gwen in a moment, when he will recreate his original role in this delightful 20th century Fox picture. It's Thanksgiving Day in New York City. On a broad avenue adjoining Central Park, an annual event is being joyfully awaited. The spectacular parade presented by Macy's Department Store to herald in the Christmas season. Away from the crowd are two of Macy's public relations experts. He's simply wonderful, Mrs. Walker. Just look at him on that float. The most realistic Santa Claus we've ever had. <laughs> Why, he didn't even need any padding, did he? Padding? But didn't you notice his tummy? It's so round, it's so firm, it's so fully packed. <laughs> well, now that everything's under control, where on earth did you find him? I... I don't know. I just turned around and there he was. And you think that the man whose place he took was... Uh, was intoxicated. With a breath that would knock over a reindeer. Just think if Mr. Macy had seen him. What if Mr. Gimble had seen him? Competition between our stores is tough enough as it is. And the parade's starting... Let's stand at the curb. Not I, Mr. Shellhammer. I'm going home and relax. Anyway, I can see it from there. I live just around the corner. Oh, so you do. Well, see you tomorrow, Mrs. Walker. And congratulations on finding the best Santa Claus in Macy's history. Here's a list of toys that we we have to push. 
Huh? You know, things we're overstocked on. Oh. Now, you'll find that a great many children will be undecided as to what they want for Christmas. When that happens, you immediately suggest one of these items. <laughs> you understand? I certainly do. Fine. Now, take the list, and Alfred here will show you to your throne in the toy department. And don't forget, you're working for Macy's. Are you really Santa Claus? Why, of course I am. What do you want for Christmas, little boy? I want a fire engine with a real hose that squirts real hot water. And I won't do it in the house. I'll only do it in the backyard. I promise. And I promise you will get your fire engine. You see, Mama? I told you... Wants to thank Santa Claus, too. Yes, madam? What's the matter with you? Now, now, now. What's the trouble? Well, I told you before, didn't I? The kid wants a fire engine, but there isn't one to be had anywhere in town. Macy's ain't got any, Gimbal's ain't got any, nobody's got any. My feet are killing me, and you say, okay, he gets the fire engine. Yeah, but you can get those fire engines at Schoenfeld. On Lexington Avenue, only 450. Wonderful, Bob. Schoenfeld? I don't get it. Oh, I follow the toy market very closely. Macy sending people to other stores? Are you kidding? Well, the one important thing is to make the children happy, isn't it? Whether Macy's or somebody else sells the toy doesn't matter. Don't you feel that way? Who, me? Yeah. Oh, yeah, sure. Only I didn't know Macy's did. <laughs> I don't get it. I just don't get it. Uh, who's next, please? Right this way to see Santa Claus. <laughs> All right, little girl. You're next. Oh, but of course, little girl. You want some roller skates? Well, you shall have them, too. And he has some fine skates here at Macy's, haven't you, Santa Claus? Oh, they're good skates, all right, but, but, but not quite good enough. Now, I left some really wonderful roller skates at Gimbal's. I'm sure Gimbal's had just what this good little girl wants. Mr. Shellhammer? Are you Mr. Shellhammer? Gimbal's. Oh, that's just what he did say. Gimbal? Uh, the sales lady said I should speak to you. Uh, Gimbal? I just want to congratulate you and Macy's on this wonderful new stunt you're pulling. Mom? Imagine a big outfit like Macy's putting the spirit of Christmas ahead of the commercial. Mom? Well, from now on, I'm going to be a regular Macy's customer. Mom! All right, Mortimer, we're going. Gimbal? <laughs> over there, Mr. Gary. You certainly know all about the Macy's store, don't you, Susan? Well, that's because my mother works here. But I still think it's silly bringing me here to see Santa Claus. Well, I'll just feel it when you've talked to him. Okay, Mr. Mr. Gailing. I'm certainly willing to try. <laughs> what a fine young lady. And what's your name, little girl? Susan Walker, what's yours? Mine? Chris Kringle. I'm Santa Claus. Hmm. Oh, oh, you don't believe that, eh? Uh-uh. You see, my mother's Mrs. Walker. Oh. But I must say, you're the best-looking Santa Claus I've ever seen. Really? Your beard, oh. for instance. It doesn't have one of those things that goes over your ears. Well, that's just because it's real. Just like I'm really Santa Claus. Now, go ahead. Go on. Pull it. Real. Yeah. And now, what would you like me to bring you for Christmas? Nothing, thank you. Whatever I want, my mother will get. If it's sensible and doesn't cost too much, that's oh. quite right, Susan. Mm. Oh, hello, hello mother. Mrs. Walker. Hello, Mr. Galing. The explanation for all this is very simple. Your maid's mother sprained her ankle. She had to go home, so she asked me to bring Susie down to you. As long as we were here, I figured we might as well say hello to Santa Claus. He has real whiskers, Mother. Susan, would you mind standing over there a minute? If you want me to. I, uh, shouldn't have brought Susie to see Santa, eh? Now you're making me feel completely heartless. Well, I'm sorry. Don't you see? I tell Susan that Santa Claus is a fable, and you show her a very convincing old man with real whiskers. Whom is she to believe? Yeah, that's right. Isn't it? When Susan was a baby, her father and I were divorced. Ever since then, I've protected my child by teaching her reality. If you don't believe in fairy tales and fantasy, you can never be hurt or disillusioned. We were talking about Susie, Mrs. Ward. And I must ask you to let me raise her as I see fit. All right, dear. The store's going to close soon. We'll run along to my office. Alfred said 
said you wanted to see me, Mrs. Walker. Oh, oh yes, come in. I, um, I'd be grateful if you'll please tell Susan you're not really Santa Claus. Huh? That there actually is no such person. No, but Mrs. Walker, not only is there such a person, but here I am to prove it. No, no, you misunderstand. I want you to tell her the truth. Now, what's your real name? Chris Kringle. And I always tell the truth. Susie, I'll bet you're in the first grade. Second grade? I mean, your real name. Well, that is my real name. My goodness, Susie, a second grade? Very well. I have your employment card right here. I'll look it up on that. That's a very cute dress, Susie. It's for Macy's. We get 10% off. Oh. So you always tell the truth, do you? Look at your employment card. Yes. Name, Chris Kringle. Address, Brooks Memorial Home, Great Neck, Long Island. You will call the home if you can care to confirm that, Mrs. Walker. It's a home for elderly gentlemen. Would you also like for me to confirm this? What's that? Date of birth. As old as my tongue and a little bit older than my teeth. <laughs> Place of birth. North Pole. Now, really. Why, I believe you doubt me, Mrs. Walker. And this tops everything. Next of kin. Oh, there. Dasher, dancer, prancer, and victim. <laughs> I'm sorry to have to do this, Mr. Uh, Crinkle. But the, um, the Santa Claus we had two years ago is back in town, and I feel that we owe it to him to give him... Have I done something wrong? Oh, no. No, it's just that... Excuse me. Hello? Yeah, this is Mr. Shellhammer, Mrs. Walker. Come on, whatever you're doing. Mr. Macy wants to see us immediately. I'll be right up. I'm afraid I'll have to be very abrupt with you. I have to see Mr. Macy. You'll be paid for the full week, Mr. Kringle. I'll send your check to that address. Oh. oh, come right in, Mrs. Walker, Mr. Shelley. Thank you, Mr. Macy. Now, uh, about this new policy you two initiated. Uh, oh. Macy's Santa Claus sending customers to Gimble. But, but, but I can explain everything, Mr. Macy. You don't have to explain a thing. Two telegrams and over 500 phone calls. Grateful parents expressing undying gratitude to Macy's department store. Would you? Oh, you don't say. Yes. And from now on, not only will our Santa Claus continue in this manner, but every salesperson in the entire store. You, you mean if we haven't got what the customer asked for? We'd... We're to send him where he can get it. No more high pressuring and forcing a customer to take something he doesn't really want. I, I, I think that's wonderful, Mr. Macy. Yes, yes. We'll be known as, uh, as the helpful store, the, the friendly store. The store that places public service ahead of profits. And consequently, we'll make more profits than ever. Now, as for you, Mrs. Walker, Mr. Okay. Shellhammer, you'll find a more practical expression of my gratitude in your Christmas honor. Oh, thank oh, you, Mr. Macy. Thank you. Oh, and, uh, and tell that wonderful Santa Claus I won't forget him either. As a matter of fact, I'll tell him myself in the morning. Well, yes, indeed, Mr. Mason. Good night. Good uh, night. Uh, good night, Mr. Mason. Uh, and thank you again, sir. Uh, uh, oh, 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 imagine a bonus. Yes. Well, what's the matter with you? Mr. Shellhammer, I... I just fired him. You just fired oh, him? Oh. Santa Claus! Oh, no! Well, you couldn't have! Oh, I did! He's crazy, Mr. Shellhammer. He really thinks he is Santa Claus! I don't care if he thinks he's the Easter Bunny! Find him! It was a frantic few hours that Doris spent last night rushing out to the Brooks Memorial Home in Long Island and assuring Chris Kringle that Macy's wanted him back as Santa Claus. So Chris is again presiding over the crowded toy department, while in her office, Doris and Mr. Shellhammer... Don't you understand, Mr. Shellhammer? That old man with the nice white whiskers insists that he is Santa Claus. He's out of his mind. He might even be dangerous. I've got to tell Mr. Macy. But maybe he's only a little balmy. Anyway, you can't be sure until he's examined. We'll send him to Mr. Sawyer. Sawyer? In personnel. He's paid to examine employees, isn't he? Uh, and now, by the way, what do you think of this? What is it? A full-page ad. Macy's is running in tomorrow's newspaper. Macy's is running it? 
But it's all about the other stores, Jimmel's and Sam's. I and... know, I know. Mr. Macy's idea to help our customers find what they want. <laughs> Revolting, isn't it? <laughs> that Santa Claus certainly has started something. Oh, well, I'll get hold of him in his lunch hour and send him up to Mr. Sawyer.
would you like to be able to make snowballs in summertime, eh? Or to be the Statue of Liberty in the morning and in the afternoon fly south with a flock of geese? I'm quite sure I'd like it, but... Oh, it's very simple. Anyway, the next time they play zoo, you can be a monkey. But I don't know how to be a monkey. Yeah. Oh, I'll show you. First, you bend over a little, like, uh, like this, see? Now, let your arms hang loose, see? Like this. Like this? Yeah, that's fine. Fine. Now, put your hand over here and start scratching, see? see? <laughs> oh, that's, that's excellent, Susie. Yes. That's as fine a bit of scratching as I've ever seen. <laughs> now, now, Susie, now start chattering. Chattering? Mm-hmm. That's it, listen. <laughs> see? That's it. And keep scratching, see? Now, then, we'll do it together, eh? Come on. Chatter and scratch and scratch and chatter. <laughs> yeah, that's fine, Susan. You're doing beautifully. That's enough, 
Hot pictures, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, Mr. Gimble. Come on, R.H. Now we'll go over to my store and get some really good pictures. <laughs> Just a minute. I have something here for Santa Claus. Huh? Uh, here you are, Mr. Kringle. A check in appreciation of all you've got. Mr. Macy. That's most kind of you. I didn't think you were that generous, R.H. <laughs> That's quite a check. What are you going to do with Mr. Kringle? Well, I have a friend. A Dr. Pierce. He needs a new x-ray machine. Now buy the machine through the store. Ten percent discount. Nonsense. Come over to Gimble. We'll furnish it at cost. Keep it up, gentlemen. Keep it up. Oh. At this rate, my friend will have a whole new hospital. <laughs> How did the pictures turn out, Mr. Kringle? Oh, fine, Alfred. Fine. How about again checkers during lunch hour? Well, not today, Chris. I, uh, I don't feel so good. Huh? What's the matter, Alfred? Oh, nothing much. You remember I was telling you how I like to play Santa Claus over at the Y and give out packages to the kids? Yes. Yeah. Well, I was telling Mr. Sawyer about it, and he says that's very bad. What? That uh, psychologically it's all wrong. Wrong? To be nice to children? Well, he says guys who play Santa Claus do it because when they was young, they must have done something bad. Oh. And now they do something they think is good to make up for it, see? It's what he calls a, a guilt complex. Uh, Alfred, what else have you found wrong with you? Oh, nothing much. Just that I hate my father. Oh? I didn't know it, but he says I do. <laughs> Excuse me. Well, hey, ain't you going to have lunch? Later. Right now, I have an appointment with Mr... Oh, yeah. my office like this. Are you a licensed psychiatrist? What business is it of yours? I have a great respect for psychiatry and great contempt for meddling amateurs who go around practicing it. You shut up. You ought to be horsewhipped. Taking a boy like Alfred and filling him up with complexes and phobias until... I think I am better equipped to judge that than you. Just because Alfred wants to be kind to children, you tell him he has a guilt complex. <laughs> Having the same delusion, you couldn't possibly understand. Oh. And don't you wave that cane at me. Either you stop analyzing Alfred and I'll go straight to Mr. Macy and tell him what a contemptible fraud you are. You get out of here. Get out before I have you thrown out. There's only one way to handle a man like you. Well, maybe this will knock some sense into you. <laughs> oh, 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 my head, my head. Oh. Good day, Mr. Sawyer. Oh. Miss Prong! Miss Prong, get me the police. Get me Mrs. Walker. Get me the psychopathic ward at Bellevue Hospital. <laughs> Mr. Macy? I certainly did, Mr. Sawyer. I brought my family to the toy department to see our 
Santa Claus. And our Santa Claus isn't there. He's in Bellevue. Yes. Yes, he is, Mr. Mason. Because he's a lunatic. Yes, sir. Lunatic. Lunatic, my foot. Now, you listen to me, Sawyer. You get that case dropped right away, or you'll have another lump to match the one he gave you. But it's out of my hands. Mr. Kringle goes to court in the morning. All right. Just see that he's back in the toy department by afternoon. Now, get out of here. Chris Kringle, of course. 
Do you believe him to be of sound mind? Sound mind? <laughs> Wish I had a dozen like him. Mr. Macy, you are under oath. Do you believe that man Santa Claus? That's rather a delicate... Careful, yeah, R.H. Just think of those headlines tomorrow. Macy admits his Santa is fraud. You keep out of this, Gimble. I beg your pardon. What did you say? I hide all nothing. Nothing, Mr. Martin. <laughs> well, I wish you would. Now, and Santa Claus. Yes. In my opinion, he most certainly is. Your Honor, Your Honor, there is no such person as everybody, and you prove there isn't any. Your Honor, the prosecution requests an immediate ruling from this court. Is there or is there not a Santa Claus? No. Now, the court will take a... Hello, Emma. Why, Charlie, who doing here? Can't an old fish? And the U.S. for me to like you do now. This Kringle case? Well, I certainly don't see what they're making such a fuss about. Henry, that Santa Claus you got on front is dynamite, and you're coming up for re-election soon. Charlie, you know what happened last night? Martha brought the grandchildren. They, they wouldn't kiss Grandpa. <laughs> they wouldn't even talk to me. See what I mean? If you rule there is no Santa Claus, you better start looking for that chicken farm right now. I'm a responsible judge. How can I seriously rule that there is a Santa Claus? Because up until if you... The great of it, they don't hang up their toys. They're supposed to be in those stockings. Nice them. The toy manufacturers have to lay off them. By now, you've got the AF of L and the CR against you. And they're going to say it with votes, see? Oh, and the department stores are going to love you, too. Yes, sir, Henry. And what about the Salvation Army? they got a Santa Claus on every street corner, and they've taken a lot of money to help the poor. But you go ahead, Henry. You go in there and rule that there isn't any Santa Claus. But if you do, you can count on getting just two votes, your own and that district attorney's out there. <laughs> One vote, Charlie. He, he's a Republican. <laughs> Santa Claus seems to be largely a matter of opinion. The tradition of American justice demands a broad and unprejudiced view of such a controversial matter. But you're right. This court, therefore, intends to keep its mind open. We shall ask for evidence on either side. But you're under the burden of proof. Clearly rests with my opponent here. Can he produce any evidence to support his view? If you're on it, please, I can. Will Thomas Mara please take the stand? Who? Me? No, no. Thomas Mara, Jr. I believe he and his mother are both in court today. Hi, Papa. Hi. <laughs> Tommy, do you believe in Santa Claus? I sure do. Gosh, he gave me a brand new sled last year. Mm-hmm. Now, Tommy, what does Santa Claus look like? Well, there he is, sitting right over there. You're right over there. Tell me, Tommy, why are you so sure that the Santa Claus? Because my papa told me so. <laughs> Thank you, Papa. Thank you, Tommy. You... Thank you, Papa. Uh, yes, you certainly will. <laughs> You're a runner. Don't forget, Santa Claus. Uh, this year I want a football helmet. Don't worry, Tommy. You'll get it. Mr. Kringle, if you don't mind. I'm sorry, sir. Your Honor, the state of New York concedes the existence of a Santa Claus, but in so conceding, we demand that Mr. Gailey stop presenting personal opinion as evidence. I insist he submit authoritative proof that Mr. Kringle here is the one and only Santa Claus. Now, Mr. Gailey, are you prepared to show that Mr. Kringle is Santa Claus on the basis of unprejudiced authority? Well, uh, no, uh, not now. I need a little time. Oh, why not now? Uh, tomorrow, Your Honor. Very well. Court's adjourned till tomorrow morning. Oh, brother. Now, come on, Susan, dear. Finish your supper. But I can't, Mother. All these things you're saying in the newspapers about Mr. Kringle and Mr. Gailey. They're having this trial because he says he's Santa Claus. He's so kind and nice and jolly. He's not like anyone else I know. He must be Santa. You know something? I think perhaps you're right. 
Is Mr. Kringle sad now, Mother? I'm afraid he must be. Then I'll write him a letter. Maybe that'll make him feel better. Maybe that'll cheer him up a little bit. Oh, Postman. Postman? Uh, yeah, lady? Would you mind taking this letter? Oh, sure, lady. We're going straight down to the post office now. Okay, Louie, take it away. Uh, hey, what do you know, Louie? Another letter for Santa Claus. Hey, here's a new one. Instead of North Pole, this kid's got it addressed to Chris Kringle, New York County Courthouse. Well, the kid's right. Huh? Oh, yeah, sure. They got one trial down there. <laughs> he claims he's Santa Claus and the DA claims he's nuts. Hey, hey, I got an idea. How many Santa Claus letters we got down there with a dead letter office? Who knows? Maybe 50,000 bags and bags all over the joint. You mean? What's oh, Frankie? Why not? Wouldn't it be nice to get rid of them all? <laughs> Wouldn't it? Boy, oh boy, look, Louie. As soon as we get to the post office and go see the supervisor. Hey, you know something? I thought we'd both get promoted. <laughs> And since the defense has been unable to submit one shred of proof that Chris Kringle is the one and only Santa Claus, and since tonight is Christmas Eve, I ask, Your Honor, that this hearing be terminated without further delay. I protest. I do have evidence. Five minutes ago, you said you didn't. During Mr. Mara's oration, the bailiff handed my client the evidence I refer to. What evidence? This is Your Honor. Oh, yes, Mr. Kringle? It's from Susan Walker. She believes in me. This letter means more to me than anything in the world. That letter was delivered by the United States Post Office, an official agency of the federal government. The Post Office Department is one of the largest business concerns in the world. Last year, it did a gross volume of over $1 billion. And this year... Your Honor, I'm sure we're all gratified that the Post Office is getting along so well. But what bearing has it got to do on the sanity of that man? My point is that the post office department is a model of efficiency. Furthermore, the laws of this country make it a criminal offense to willfully misdirect mail or intentionally deliver it to the wrong party. The state of New York is second to none in its admiration of the post office department. We are very happy to concede Mr. Gailey's claim. For the record, Mr. Mara. For the record, anything to get on with this case. Thank you. Your Honor, that letter just received by Mr. Kringle is positive proof that a company... Your Honor, one letter is hardly positive. I have further exhibits, Your Honor, but I hesitate to produce them. Come, come Mr. Gailey, put them here on my desk. But Your Honor, I did put them on my desk. All right, boys, bring them in. <laughs> Your Honor. Your Honor, what is this? You see those mail sacks on Judge Harper's desk? Yeah, but, but we got six truckloads out there. Bring them in. It'll be a fine for contempt of court. No, no, just a second. Well, we'll do it. We'll do it, Your Honor. Through rain, through sleet, through courtrooms, anything. We go over. <laughs> Daily. Your Honor, every one of those letters in every one of those mail sacks is addressed to Santa Claus. The post office has delivered them here. Therefore... The post office department recognizes Chris Kringle to be the one and only Santa Claus. Since the United States government declares this man to be Santa Claus, this court will not dispute it. Hey, this man. Well, for heaven's sake, get this mail out of my courtroom. I'm so glad you won. Thank you. Well, we're having a big Christmas party at the Brooks home tomorrow morning. I'd like so much to see you and Susan there. We'll be there, Chris. Mm -hmm. Couldn't you... Couldn't you come home now? Have dinner with us? Now? Tonight? Me? Oh, my goodness, Doris. It's Christmas Eve. <laughs> Alfred. Alfred, look. Look who came all the way out here to the home, just for our Christmas party. Chris, it, it's Mr. Macy. Yes, and Mr. Gimble, too. Oh, excuse me, Alfred. Mrs. Walker and Susie have to leave now, and I... Uh... 